Just Cause 2 is a very serious game about American foreign policy. It features great American ideals such as freedom, liberation, interventionism, and the unlimited power of the CIA. You play as Rico Rodriguez, a Spider-Man wannabe with a deep hatred of public infrastructure and the color red. The game is set on the lovely island nation of Banal and is filled to the brim with red infrastructure and various government built objects. Rico, being a supreme individual, doesn't believe in public goods or the state, and as such they must be destroyed. To do this, Rico will use lots of weapons, vehicles, explosives, and various other creative means of destruction. Accompanying him on his infrastructure crusade are the three different factions and the agency, each with distinctive colors, vehicles, ideology, and glorious leaders which I will discuss in great detail later. My name, my name, is my name is the objective of the game is to depose the optimally sized dictator of Panay. Pandak Panay by causing as much chaos as possible. The reason given is vague and uninteresting, especially when there are many, many red objects to destroy. To get around, Rico has a convenient and comfortable method of travel, his grappling hook which gently sends him careening into the surface it attaches to. The grappling hook also serves as a great way of negating all fall damage somehow. As we all know, when you're falling towards the ground, pulling yourself towards it faster is the safest way to land. The grappling hook is accompanied by a parachute. When used together, they form a truly great combo. The grappler can be used as a weapon by pulling enemies around and off of tall ledges, straight up spanking them, tethering enemies to any surface, and various other means of creative expression. The weapons in the game range from generic assault rifles, pistols, and grenades, to triggered explosives, grenade launchers, miniguns, a quad rocket launcher, the air propulsion gun, and best of all, the happy bubble blaster. The weapons have some weird design quirks, like some pretty aggressive auto aim and one shot headshots for all guns. Weapons can also be upgraded to perform better, with some weapons becoming extremely powerful. Single-handed weapons can be dual-wielded for extra firepower and action movie vibes. All of these are great tools for blowing stuff up without vehicles. Speaking of which, the vehicles. Just Cause 2 has quite a large arsenal of vehicles, from everyday sedans to motorcycles, sports cars, buses, tractors, trucks, APCs, tanks, helicopters, passenger planes, attack jets, monster trucks, a hovercraft, a hot air balloon, and even a tuk-tuk with a tank cannon mounted to it. Vehicles in Just Cause 2 are optimized to be as action movie as possible, like whenever you bail out of a car it will explode even if it just grazes against something. Or if a helicopter you're flying explodes, it doesn't kill you until it hits the ground, giving you time to bail out. These features are small, but really add to the game's very high seriousness. Car's handle, like military grade butter, has been applied to each wheel, making turning at high speed probably a bad idea. The buses handle surprisingly well, and the butter tires make them pretty fun to drift around after you wait the necessary 13 years of accelerating. Helicopters are surprisingly easy to fly, mainly because they can't pitch down very far, making dying in a helicopter crash much more difficult. Planes are a bit weird because the larger ones really, really don't want to go upside down. I don't know why, but they're limited to a pretty small amount of roll, which makes turning a very painful experience in the larger passenger aircraft. This is pretty inconvenient when there are any obstacles in the way, as the large turning circle makes it very hard to dodge things, especially when the obstacle is unexpected. If you want maximum mayhem, then look no further than the various attack jets of the game. Each of the jets boasts powerful weapons and such a high speed that you can run away from basically anything. The best is definitely the G9 Eclipse, which for some reason has four high explosive auto cannons. These are the same cannons that are mounted to the tanks in the game, but while the tanks shoot this fast, the G9 shoots this fast. These cannons will basically vaporize anything you point them at. So what would you want to point them at? Well, anything painted in a convenient, angry red is probably able to be destroyed. These red objects are located on the over 300 different settlements across the 1,000 square kilometer map. Each of these settlements has red objects, some boxes, various other non-destructible objects, and acceptable collateral damage. 
Each settlement has a certain number of objects inside. Destroying infrastructure and collecting all the boxes in a settlement will complete it, meaning that it has a green tick and not much else. Very rewarding. These settlements and objects add to completion. A nice little feature unlocked after finishing the game that will consume your soul as you try to get it to 100%. The furthest I've been with completing this game is a little over 85% after getting this achievement. This involves completing over 200 bases, which do actually get repetitive after a while. Seriously, I do not recommend going for high completion, it's a complete waste of energy. To help with this great task, Rico has a lot of connections and can make the appropriate calls when he needs a delivery. The delivery system is a good way of getting weapons and certain vehicles that don't appear anywhere else on the map. Remember the factions I mentioned? These factions give missions ranging from boring pickup and drop off missions to car chases, destroying big things, going to a spooky island, blowing up rockets that are mid launch, and stronghold takeovers. Stronghold takeovers are used to spread faction influence and advance the story, but are pretty boring, with each being almost identical. Go to the faction's base, get transported to the facility, get your dudes, listen to the beautiful dialogue, Assault the next blockade, comrades. shoot some dudes, jump over a shitty little gate, and shoot more dudes, get to the park where your dudes pick up the minigun and shoot a few more dudes, shoot the base commander, Bin. These missions are unintentionally hilarious because each one of them uses the same voice actor, and he is really, really bad. Today, we fight with handguns! Tomorrow, we can fight with cruise missiles. A little while after completing a stronghold takeover, a radio message will broadcast from Radio Panau, the voice of truth. So listen to it. Saying some convenient, made-up excuse about why there were loud noises around the base. There was no gunfire, he claims. It was only some engines backfiring. Our glorious leader has proclaimed next Tuesday happy execution day. The other missions in the game get quite good. You can tell if the mission is a good one because it will have a reward of 7,500 chaos points instead of 5,000. These missions tend to be longer and better made, with some actually being really fun, like blowing up some satellites on launching rockets. The game suffers from quite a number of glitches, many hilarious and others just strange. Rico takes very little fall damage if he opens his parachute before hitting the ground, making for some truly beautiful moments. Very nice. Civilians will sometimes go into this crouched stance when they are scared. Don't let this fool you. It's actually their escape mechanism. If you give them a tiny nudge, they shoot themselves upwards like a frog. Sometimes when driving around the city areas, the game just goes kind of... Stretching out the buildings and other assets. This one piece of dialogue repeats every single time I start the game. Every. Single. Time. Look at him roast, Rico. Dripping with delicious fat. Remember when I said that I completed 85% of the game? Well, this took around 40 hours. There are 369 settlements in the game, and 3,000 collectibles. If you use an external tool, you can see just how many items there are to collect and destroy. The destructible items range from small antennae to large spherical fuel tanks, statues, and other fun stuff. The collectibles help in a pretty small way, but build up as you continue to play the game. Armor parts give a very small amount of health for every five you collect. Weapon and vehicle parts are used to upgrade items in the black market, and cash drops give you 2,500 bucks. There are also 300 faction items littered around the map, 100 for each faction. Yular boys have skulls that are usually in high places like mountains or high up in the desert. Roaches have drug drops that are very common in the cities and around bridges. And the reapers have black boxes that can only be found in the water. Each settlement in the game has a certain number of things to collect and destroy, which contributes to the individual settlement's completion. However, there are plenty of objects in the game that are not inside a settlement, and are thus much harder to track down. For instance, mobile radars. I didn't even know that these existed for at least the first 30 hours of playing. They only seem to appear in coastal areas and are very small. There are also wind turbines, which can be found in settlements but mostly appear outside. They're also fun to stick things to and watch people fly around. Pipelines also rarely appear in settlements and can be found by looking around for pipes leading off into the distance. Ugh. So 
Salva Mia. Just Cause 2 features a very deep and intricately detailed story about lies, deception, and lots of subtleties. Rico and his handler Kane fly into to look for his former handler Tom Sheldon, who they suspect has gone rogue and stolen agency money. They get shot at a bit, and some memory cards fall out of the helicopter. After collecting the memory cards, Kane goes, Carl Blaine, their last known contact on and they try to go find him at his home. Instead, they find Jade Tan, Carl's girlfriend? I don't know. Who says, They go to this casino to find Carl because he's a gambling degenerate, and Rico takes him back to his house with a nice afternoon drive. Rico threatens Carl, so Carl is all like, Relax, buddy. We'll and points him to the three criminal factions and introduces him to a black market dealer. I am the demon. Carl does this by downloading the intel onto Rico's PDA. Little does Rico know, Carl is an elite hacker and has also downloaded a tracking device. Rico goes to the criminal factions to meet their leaders. The Roaches are Panau's urban mob. Their leader is Razak Razma, who has freakishly long arms and is not a man one would want to leave around unattended children. The Eula boys are a group of eco-terrorists led by this guy who calls Rico Sardadu a whole lot. Finally, Revolutionary Army known as the Reapers. a bunch of <laughs> led by Bolo. truly the greatest faction. Bolo was voiced by possibly the greatest voice actor in history. That is wonderful, my sweet, sweet comrade. Rico does some favors in return for information on an American. After causing a good amount of chaos, the faction leaders gain intel for Rico. You've got mail. So Rico goes to the desert to look for this dude called Ken Pang, who is also a gambling degenerate, and he leads you to the White Tiger. Then Rico gets fucking blowgun. He wakes up and ah! Turns out he is Tom Sheldon. Thrilling stuff. Then Sheldon cooks a pig and says, "Dripping with delicious fat." Then. Military dudes come along and die. And Sheldon's all like, I have to go deep undercover lest I be killed. Then he accuses Carl of being a rat, and this cutscene plays. Brilliance. Sheldon wants Rico to keep causing chaos for some reason. So after causing a lot more chaos, he meets back up with Sheldon and he says that the random girl from the beginning of the game. What was her name? Ah, oh yeah. Jade Tan is being held hostage in the Snow Fortress. Rico then has to blow up some things and arrives at the entrance to the base where he fights ninjas. Yeah, cool. Rico f***ing the ninjas and chases Jade out while they are fleeing in some vehicles. Then, a 500 meter long nuclear submarine pops out of the lake, which is the most obvious place to store nuclear submarines. The sub fires a few missiles, but they're painfully shit and do nothing. Rico gets Jade to safety aboard Sheldon's helicopter. Then they chill out on a boat, and Jade is all like, look at these bad international dudes, while Sheldon cooks another pig. Barbecued pig, anyone? After causing considerable chaos, Rico finds out that these international dudes are chilling out in the Three Kings Hotel. He goes over there with Sheldon, with the intent to murder. This Chinese general guy is first, and he likes explosives. Very exciting. Rico kills him. The Russian dude is next, and his thing is that he has a tank. Also, it's surrounded by these claymores that kill you instantly. Oh. Awesome. The Japanese dude has this satellite system that fires rockets out you, and it also kills you instantly. Oh my god. After Rico f***ing murders these dudes, he extracts no information, and nothing of value is gained. After Rico goes out and causes even more chaos, he finds where the dictator dude is hiding, and has to choose a faction to help kill him. Naturally, you gotta choose Bolo. Then Rico finds this big f***ing stone head thing and opens up its mouth to go inside a dome. Inside he finds Pene, who tells Rico that the reason that so many international dudes are here is because there is a huge reserve of oil. Then f***ing Carl appears out of nowhere and- wait, no, Carl, no don't do it, Carl! Very good. Rico kills a bunch more dudes and makes it out of the dome, where he and old Sheldo talk about oil. Now that Panay's dead, Rico goes to secure the oil field for US interests and the big ass atomic sub surfaces again. 
Rico goes inside the sub and, plot twist, Panay is still alive. Rico fucking domes him like 40 times and he still doesn't die, so he launches his nuclear missiles. Then his clothes get caught or something and he gets pulled up with the missiles. Naturally, Rico follows. Then Rico and destroys the missiles in mid air while the dictator is shooting at him. Finally, he gets to the last missile, stuffs Panay into the hatch and sends it into the oil. And that's it. Just Cause 2. Truly a masterpiece. Got that right. Here's to a brighter tomorrow. Cheers, everyone. To a brighter tomorrow. Salud. So I uh, didn't really plan out an end to this video. So watch my Civ 5 video. Get subscribing to hear this lovely new microphone. And yeah.